In this tutorial, we'll cover environment lighting using pre-made HDRIs from the Keyshot library. So let's go to the environment tab. And uh, here in the environment tab, we've got all these settings. So what is our environment? So on the left hand side on our library, we have this environment tab. And this is where all of our HDR environments are stored. We've got a little over 50 in here. If I zoom way out from my model, you'll see that my model, this camera is sitting inside a sphere and the sphere is providing the light in this scene. So what I can do is I can select another environment and apply it. And when I do that, you'll notice that the appearance of my model changes. Uh, the light is now coming from this sphere. Uh, the shadows are different. Uh, the reflections are different. Uh, so here on this forest road, I have a really bright sun over here. So it's casting a strong shadow. If I go to, uh, let's say this Iceland scene here on that day in Iceland, it was cloudy. So I don't really have a whole lot as far as shadows go. And my reflections are going to be really blue because of the sky and really kind of reddish orange because of the ground color. Uh, but we can always change the environment just by going to our environment tab, grabbing a different environment and applying it here in our real time view. So that's our lighting environment. It's always there, even if we can't see it and it's casting the light. One change that we did make for Keyshot 6 is we changed or, or we added the ability to change the default environment. I changed mine to the three panel straight. That's one of the environments that I really like because it has a lot of contrast. If that's something you're interested in, you can go to edit and preferences. And right here, I under general, I can select default startup environment. And so I changed that to this three panels. Um, it just, when you click this little folder icon, pops open a dialog. Uh, and here's where you can navigate into studio. And in this case, I'd go to panels side panels, and then three panel straight. So every time I open Keyshot, the default environment is this environment. So small change, but a good one. All right, so what are the changes that we can make to our environment? Uh, some of the basics, brightness, we can control how much light is being cast by the environment. Default value is one. We can change the rotation of our environment. So this is us actually rotating the environment uh, around the up axis Really nice hotkey for this is holding down control on Windows, command on Mac. Uh, and if you just click and drag in your real time view, that will rotate the environment. You can also change the height. So if I use this height slider, it'll move the environment up or down in relation to my piece of geometry, right? Because my geometry is in the middle of the sphere. Now I can move the sphere up or down or around it. Default value there is zero. So just some quick changes that we can make. We can go in, we can get our camera angle set up and then drag the environment and rotate it to get the exact reflections that we want. Uh, I highly suggest taking a look at the environments that are in the library. There's some really, really great ones there. Uh, and it's a great way of uh, trying out different appearances for your models. Uh, for example, this one, right? So this is a light tent so with a white floor so it's set up kind of like a photo studio would be we have this nice white backdrop and then we've got some bright light so if i zoom in you can see my model looks great in this environment so sometimes you're working with an environment Let's say go back to this one just for now and i don't want to see this background i don't want to see the environment in the background under the background tab i can select color what this will do is it changes the background to just be a pure white color. And if I move my camera around, you'll notice that uh, here I don't have my environment visible. If you look at my model though, the reflections are of my environment. If I change my environment, but keep the white uh, background color, right? So if I put this into another outdoor environment, you'll see regardless of what my background is, the lighting environment is always visible. It's always providing the reflections, uh, the shadows and the highlights in our scene. So now if I toggle back to lighting environment being visible, you'll see that there's that, that outdoor scene with the bright sun on white, right? It's still there. So if you're rendering something in kind of a studio setting and you don't want to have that extra color information, use a neutral environment. Right, so now I can have the lighting environment visible or I can set the color. A nice thing here as well is that if I change that color, I can go in and I can select whatever color I want. But whenever you're working with the color, um, 
the color dialog here. You can always, and this works for materials as well, you can use an eyedropper tool. And actually, I can actually sample a color, like a green, from that camera, right? And now I have my model sitting on a green color with this nice studio background. So small thing, uh, but knowing that eyedropper tool is in there can be really helpful. Additionally, we can work with a backplate image. So we can have the lighting environment visible, which I really don't recommend. Uh, you could have a color or we can use a backplate. And we have some pre-made backplates. And this is how you start rendering in context or with a little bit more control over your background. So I'll toggle that back to lighting environment. There's our lighting environment. Uh, but let's say we wanted to do an outdoor rendering. I could get one of these outdoor uh, backplates, uh, something like, let's say here, this parking spot. And now hit F, go back into full screen mode. Now my camera is sitting on this backplate. So these backplates, you can use any image as a backplate. Uh, so they're just a JPEG or a PNG or a TIFF, but you can go out, take a picture of something you want to have as the background, and then just apply it as a backplate image. You'll notice that my lighting doesn't match, right? The model itself, again, is still reflecting the lighting environment. So what I have to do is I have to change my lighting environment to match that backplate. Well, I'll go over to my environment tab, go to the outdoor folder, and then here's that same matching environment. I can rotate the environment. Oh, looks like I was going the wrong way. Rotate it. Let's change the height so that it kind of matches my backplate or gets, you know, decently close. But now for the background, check backplate image. Hit F, go back in a full screen mode. Right, and now you can see my model is actually reflecting everything you see here. My model looks good on the backplate. So we have an environment with the matching backplate. This is the HDR image. The background is just a picture that we pull from the internet or we you know, take from our own camera. But this is the best way to get in context renderings. Work with backplate images that match your environment. If you're working with kind of studio shots and you don't want just kind of a plain color for your background, uh, we also have under the backplates, we've got some studio backplates. So these are some ways of, uh, or these are backplates that have some kind of dramatic element to them, right? So we don't necessarily have to model in some sort of um, background or ramp or drop or anything like that. Uh, I can just use a backplate image. And in this case, I'll get a studio because the studio environment's gonna match, right? So now I've got a pretty realistic kind of studio appearance with a backplate that matches. So different backgrounds, we can use a lighting environment, a color or a backplate, quick hotkeys for, oops, sorry about that. Quick hotkeys for our background, E for lighting environment, uh, C for color, uh, B for backplate, right? So we have control over those. So I'll just go back to the lighting environment just so we can see that. And also right click, look at model center, and now I'm snapped to the center of my geometry. So regardless of what your background is, we can also control under the ground settings, whether we're working with ground shadows on or off, and we can also enable ground reflection. So if I put this back onto a color, you'll see a little bit of a pop of the reflection on that part. So this is an overview of working with our environments, right? But we covered the three basic types of background, so lighting environment, color, backplate image, and then adjusting your environment settings. Next, we'll talk about the lighting tab. The lighting tab in Keyshot under our project window involves all of our lighting presets and our real-time settings. So in this example here, uh, we're working with a custom setting because it looks like I've changed some of my lighting presets. I'll just go back to the default or the basic lighting settings. Depending on the type of product that you're working with, we can change our lighting presets. So if I check product, right? What this will do if I expand the settings is that it will change the settings to best work with a product. If I was working with an interior, I could use the interior preset. And you'll see here it's taking, uh, it's rendering a little bit differently, but we have different lighting presets that we can use depending on the type of model or the geometry that we're working with. You can also save custom lighting settings. For example, I've saved one for working with clear plot products and other rendering with shadows and shadow passes. Uh, one that's in there by default is jewelry. And you'll see this is cranked up a lot of the settings because the settings generally tend to be higher when working with your jewelry. 
Uh, if I go back to performance mode, that strips everything down so it's working with the most simple settings. Uh, but we've tried to make it a little bit easier so that now you can just work off of lighting presets instead of going in and adjusting all those settings individually. Uh, again, you can always save uh, your own kind of um, custom lighting preset. Uh, so let's say I like product and I also wanted ground illumination. Uh, then now with ground illumination enabled, I can hit this little plus right here and I can call this, uh, let's call this product plus. But that way, that setting is going to be saved. So every time I open Keyshot, that's a pre-made setting, good to go. So what was previously in the settings tab is now try to make it a little bit more simple by just being here available under the lighting tab. In our next tutorial, we'll talk about the camera tab. For more tutorials, quick tips, and webinar recordings, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can learn more at keyshot.com learning. Thank you for watching.